Hi, I'm the woodpecker today. I make a picture frame and a stand for my mother. If you have followed me for a while, well, in 2011, my third episode was about the two cremation horns I made for my parents. Unfortunately, I used one in 2015 for my father. Now we have to use the second one for my mother. It's been in our living room for nearly three months now. Because of the COVID situation, we had to postpone the ceremony. But I also need to make a matching mahogany picture frame. The first thing to do is to rip some strips of mahogany. Next, I cut four corners at 45 degrees. When that's done, I move the miter, set the stop block and cut two pieces. I move the stop again and make the remaining two cuts. Now I'm ready to glue the frame. But uh, the glue is too light. I add some dye to it. After mixing this well, I apply it on every cut I made and clamp this. Now I just need to wait for the glue to dry. When it is, I send the excess glue. But the glue won't be enough to keep this joint together by itself. So I will add four dog bone shapes at the back of the frame. But before cutting pockets in my nice wood, I'll laser draw what I want to cut out first. Now I can clearly see what will be cut. With the 45 degree lines, it will be so much easier to align the frame. To do this, I just need to stick the frame with double-sided tape. Meh, but before cutting, I'll check this again with the laser, just to be on the safe side. Since I'm confident it will work, it's time to remove some wood. With a 1-8 bit, this takes a little bit more than 9 minutes. But I also need to cut some duck bones. One cut gives me two plugs. but I need to cut them in two. After making the cut straight and chamfering the edges, I can use my tenton glue to glue them in place. Now I just need to wait for the glue to dry. When it is, I sand this smooth. And here's the final result. Uh, not bad. Right away, I can cut a rabbit on the back for the glass and the picture. But I noticed pretty quickly that if I had cut the rabbit with the CNC while doing the pockets, it would have taken way less time. And after that, it's a go. It's time to cut the picture frame's shape. But obviously, after seven hours, catastrophe. The hanging wire from the laser control got cut in one of the old downs and everything is crooked. When I notice it, <laughs> well, my frame looked like this. I need to make another one. After ripping and gluing four new pieces, it's time to cut the duck bones for the back. But this time around, I also cut the rabbit. By using a quarter inch bit this time, all this took one minute less than last time. And the glass fits perfectly. Uh, but I still need to glue the duck bones in place. When the glue is dry and everything is well sanded, it's time to go back to the CNC. Since this will take just a bit less than 15 hours, I have time to explain how I did the frame's profile. 
I bought hundreds of picture frame STL files. We decided that this pattern will be the one. Now I just need to open Aspire and import the file. Uh, but it's way too big. I scale it down to the size of the width of my workspace. Here it is, but the original frame is taller than what I need. So after moving the frame at the top and making sure it's well centered, I draw a big square at the bottom and remove everything that's inside the square. After switching the combined mode to merge, I mirror the top part of the frame and group this. With this selected, I can create a vector boundary around the frame. By selecting only the inside, I can make a cutting tool path. But it's only here that I notice that I forgot to set the frame thickness. I fix this and now I can really make the inside cut. I do this again for the outside. But even if I add the interior and exterior cuts, I still need to calculate the frame tool paths itself. After a couple of seconds, I have a file that is cutting what you're seeing right now. And here's the final result. It's really what I was hoping for. I'm really pleased. But I also need the support to hold the frame straight. I begin by cutting a piece of plywood. This stand will also be cut on the CNC. To make it again, I use a spire and this picture I found on the net. I just need to trace the shape around the picture. When I'm done, I use the node editing to refine the shape of the stand. When I'm satisfied, I mirror the shape. I just need to draw the slots so both pieces will slide into each other. To help me, I use the guides. Now I just need to save this and cut it on the CNC. Ah, but I still need to make a bit more work. Here's my stand. This will be perfect for the picture frame. Ah, but it's a little bit too light. I need to stain the wood. After spreading it everywhere, I need to wait for the stain to dry. When it is, it's time to brush some shellac on both pieces and also on the picture frame. I use a brush to apply shellac on all the small holes on the frame. But still, it's a bit too much. I have to blow the excess away. I brush five coats like this. Now that the shellac is dry, I can chamfer the hole of all the photo frame turns. Drill pilot holes and screw the turns in place. After cutting a piece of glass and a cardboard to the right size, I can clean the glass, put it in place and put the picture and the cardboard on top. Now the picture frame for my mom is finished. I'm really pleased with the result. Now I can put it right beside the urn, up until the date of the ceremony. I have to admit, this frame is perfect, just like mom was with us. Thank you and see you soon for another episode of The Woodpecker.